Seven, the preliminary design shows a three-story building for the site. Using some preliminary calculations, the typical column load looks to be approximately 60 kips. Looking through the soil report, you see a series of possibilities. Which of the following seems to be the most likely for your preliminary design for the footing size and depth? Uh, so first of all, let's say uh, where did the soil report come from? Like we just talked about earlier, the owner has supplied the geotechnical information, so the soils report actually is given to the architect by the owner. You don't actually order it, the owner, order, owner, owner orders it. Um, now, having said that, there's plenty of times when I've ordered the geotechnical because the owner just couldn't get it together. So uh, I've done that many times, but technically I'm not supposed to have done that. So they've sent me this thing. I'm now looking through it. I'm trying to figure out, uh, we have a preliminary conversation with the structural engineer. They say, yeah, there'll be about 60 kips. You're trying to get the conceptual drawings so they look at least reasonably accurate. Uh, and we're trying to figure out which of the following seems like a possible thing. So let's throw away a couple. Uh, the first one we're going to throw away, see that word peat? Peat means organic. Anytime I have organic material uh, means that it's going to change shape. It's going to uh, decompose. It's going to go through a process. I will never build anything on top of anything with peat or any organic material. Uh, that word is in there specifically to trip you up. That is. That is the classic sort of, uh, go ahead, it looks reasonable. Uh, you've all heard the word peat before. That must be a reasonable choice. Uh, and it's a famous one that they put in there in order to get you to make that choice. And it is absolutely wrong. Uh, you never build on top of organic material. You would always strip it away and get something non-organic uh, to, to put it on. So we can get rid of A. Uh, another one that we can get rid of, uh, this talks about a typical column. So it doesn't say anything about being like near a property line or anything like that. So another one that we can get rid of is this one that is uh, four by eight. Why would we do a footing that was four by eight? So if you imagine a footing kind of long and thin and then there's a column kind of in the middle of it, I, that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, that Oop, <laughs> well, wasn't, let me try to get that back here. There we go. Um, uh, that just doesn't make any sense. It's not how you would do a footing for a typical column. Uh, it's always going to be square because you want the uh, load to be evenly distributed. Uh, now, can you always do square? No, if you're right up against a property line or sometimes there's sort of unusual structural situations where I have two columns near each other or uh, there's a soil difference in one location than there is in another location. So there's times when this isn't, isn't true, but none of that is re referenced in the question. It just says a typical column. So right off the bat, you would assume that it would be square. So we have two squares. Uh, a and D are not uh, the answer. One possibility is bedrock at uh, 10,000 PSF, pounds per square foot capacity uh, for the footing, and that would be at 60 feet below grade. Uh, or we could do a four by four at 60 inches, five feet below grade, where it's setting on a sandy gravel with 4,000 PSF. Uh, well, it's kind of really no question that four by four, uh, that's 16 times 4,000 is gonna get us over uh, the 60 kips. Uh, and so B is a great answer. Uh, if I could do the same thing five feet below grade as I can do 60 feet below grade, I'm always going to choose the five feet, unless there's some other piece of information like there's a basement or something that's deeper than that. Uh, but a, uh, a caisson, which is what C is really describing, uh, is a significant expense. And so it's a big, expensive, and it's just there's no advantage for it. Um, and the numbers don't actually even work. If you multiply the 10,000 times the uh, four square feet, it only gets you uh, 40,000 uh, PSF, which is not equivalent to, uh, that would only help us in a 40 kip situation. So it doesn't even work anyway. But not only does it not work, uh, it just would be a very expensive and kind of ridiculous thing. 
Remind us again, how do we know that gets us the, uh, that's sufficient for the 60 kips? So um, if you have an area and you have, so the four by four is 16 square feet, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's the old school symbol for square feet, a square with a line through it. Um, probably most of you don't know that. <laughs> 16 with a marshmallow. And a <laughs> that's you. right, with a skewered marshmallow. Um, so 16 square feet, uh, and then we have 4,000 PSF. So pounds per square foot, PSF. That means every single square foot has the capacity to hold 4,000 uh, pounds. So we have 16 of them. So we just multiply 16 times 4,000. And what do you get? 64,000. What do you know? So we multiply that times 4,000, and that equals 64,000, which is greater than 60 kips. Remember, 60 kips, so that's 60, the K stands for essentially 1,000, uh, and 64 has, is greater than 60, and therefore we have more capacity than the load coming down. Now, remember, this is a preliminary, it talks about being preliminary, so there's some other issues. You might, uh, you might have sliding issues, you might have, uh, you know, there's all sorts of other things that might come up as it goes along. Um, this is also presuming that uh, the 4000 PSF already has uh, a factor of safety built in and the 60 KIP already has a factor of safety built in, um, but it's possible you might get a question that would be exactly like this and then it would say plus a factor of safety of, of uh, you know, 20% or something, and you'd have to add that in, uh, so it would make this a little bit more complicated. But essentially, when you're talking about a footing, there's a, each different soil type has a certain kind of capacity, uh, and some are gonna be not such a great capacity, and some are gonna be incredibly good capacity. So the bedrock at 10,000, sometimes up to even 14,000 um, uh, PSF, man, you can put a lot of load per square foot on uh, directly onto the bedrock but most places in the country that means you're going down 40 50 60 100 uh, a lot of the cities where you see these things uh, used all the time for the bigger buildings they're going down 120 140 feet to get to that bedrock that's a big big expense you got to really want to build that big building in order to make that uh, logical and, and make sense but what they're doing when they're going down is they're looking for more PSF because the other soil that's up higher than that just doesn't give them enough oomph to be able to have enough bearing capacity to be able to do that. So this is a very simplistic look. It's the kind of thing you would be doing at the early stages.